In this video, you are going to learn how to create this arc carousel in Framer without writing a single line of code. Yes, I know this effect might seem a bit hard to achieve, but it is actually pretty easy. If you watch this video until the end, you are going to learn how to use sticky positioning, how to use scroll variants, and how to trigger different animations with scroll sections. In order to follow along with this video, all you need is a free Framer account that you can create with the link in the description. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So just to talk about the original inspiration of this effect, this is coming from this Gucci website. Someone showed me this on Twitter and I really like it. The only thing that we cannot achieve in Framer is this dragging interactivity, but the way we will have this effect is by having it on scroll. So as we scroll through the website, these cards cycle through. So from the first to the to the last one. And I th still think that it's a pretty cool effect, like having this carousel on a curve and still like being able to cycle through these cards on a carousel. And uh, the fact that we will be able to do this without a single line of code is actually amazing. So let's jump in Framer. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple of things here on the main desktop breakpoint. I'm going to add a layout to it. I'm going to set it to vertical direction, the gap will be zero and the distribute will be start. Then we also have a nice full black background color and basically that's it for the main desktop breakpoint. Then I'm going to create a frame here and I'm going to make sure that it is 100 VH. Then I'm going to set the width to fill so it takes up the full width and I'm going to remove this fill color. Then I'm going to call this frame arc carousel. Um, I think this is a really descriptive name. So basically the arc carousel will be inside of this arc carousel frame and this frame will be sticky. So it will be staying on top of the viewport as we scroll down the website. So we set it to sticky, but to actually make it work, we need to set the desktop breakpoint overflow to visible. And so now we need to make the carousel that we will put inside of this arc carousel frame. And the way I'm going to do it is by drawing a huge frame here. This will be 5000 width and 5000 height. And I'm going to remove the fill because we usually use these frames for, for containers and we just don't need the fill colors for them. Now we have this huge frame. I'm going to call this actually, let's say carousel. And inside of this carousel frame, I'm going to draw another frame. This will have 300 width and 450 height. So this will be the card and we're going to have a 16 pixel radius. So it has nice round corners and I'm going to rename this to card. Also turn into a component by pressing option command and K. We're going to edit a couple of things here inside the component. But first of all, let's do the rest of the stuff. So we have this card right here. I'm going to make sure that it is inside of another frame. So we're just going to select it and hit option command and enter on our keyboard. We can actually see on the layers panel that the card is now inside of this columns frame. We're just going to rename this to first because this will be the first card basically. And we're going to set the height of this frame to 5000. So it will basically match the height of this huge frame that we drew before. And now as you can see, this card is in the middle. This is because the stack settings here on this frame, if we go on the right panel, we can see that it is set to horizontal direction, which is not great. So we're going to set it to vertical direction. And as you can see here, the distribute is set to center. So that's why this card is in the center. We just need to set it to start. And now as you can see, this is on the top. Basically, that's all I need to change here. And then I'm going to make sure that this is in the middle. There are two ways to do that. We can go here and press these, but we can also press the shortcuts and that's the option H and option V. So I think that's uh, a bit faster if you learn it. Another important thing here on this first frame is that we need to deselect these pins. So it will just basically stay in the middle of this huge carousel frame. And here all I do is that I duplicate this frame here. So I select it and press command and D. Now it's duplicated and I just change the rotation here. And as you can see, it is nicely rotated. 
and we start seeing that nice arc that we are actually looking for. So let's call this two and duplicate it one more time. And now let's set this to 20 degrees. So now as you can see, we have three nice cards and let's have a last one too. So now we have these four cards. You can add any amounts of cards here. You can basically go the whole round here, but I'm gonna just stick with four this time. And now that we have these right here, we can go inside of the card component and we can change a couple of things. The reason why it's so good that we have a component here right now, because each of these are the same component. So if I change something here on this card, so for example, I change the color, as you can see, each card will change. So I don't have to change everything four times. So on this primary variant, I'm gonna call this to inactive. So I'm just gonna rename this to inactive and I'm gonna change the opacity to 0 0.25. And I'm gonna, let's say, give it a nice color, something like a blue maybe. And let's create another variant. This will be active. And we're gonna have the opacity on one here. And on the primary variant, I'm gonna click this little plus here and create a color variable so we can easily change that from here. So as you can see, if I select the card here, I can change the color for this individual component. But let's go back inside and change another thing. On the primary variant, I'm gonna add a text and this is gonna be basically just a number and I'm gonna make sure that it is centered. Let's make it a bit bigger and the color will be white and the font will be space mono. And the weight will be bold. Okay, and on the inactive variant, we'll have it on opacity zero. And on the active variant, we'll have it on opacity one. We're gonna create another variable from the content field. So this will be a plain text. And here I can change the text too. So the first one will be first, this will be two. The background color will be something like this. This will be the third card, again with a different color. This will be the fourth one with a different color like this. Okay, these look nice. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the carousel and create another component out of this. So we're just gonna press option command K and then press enter. And the primary variant will be called first. And on the primary variant, we'll have this card on the active variant. And we're gonna add another variant. And basically the thing that we're gonna do here is that we are gonna rotate these cards around. So we're just gonna select these and change the rotation to minus 10. And this one will be zero then, this will be 10, and the last one will be 20. And always the one in the middle will have the active state and all the other cards will have the inactive state. And basically I'm gonna do this two more times for the rest of the variants. Okay, I just noticed that this text doesn't have a really great contrast ratio here, so I'm just gonna change it on the primary variant. Uh, let's have a bit darker or maybe a completely different color, something like a red. And now as you can see, it has a much better contrast ratio here. Okay, and now as you can see, I have all these different variants. So we have one, two, three, and four. And basically all I was changing is the rotation and the cards variant. And now all we have to do is to place this inside of this arc carousel frame. So I'm gonna hit command and X to cut it. And now we can go inside of the arc carousel frame and press command and V on our keyboard. I'm gonna make sure that it is horizontally aligned to the center by hitting option and H. And I'm gonna change this value to 72. And I'm gonna make sure that this is not selected here. And let's change back the height to 5000 because that was set to a different value when all these pins were activated. So now everything looks great. Maybe we can also increase this a bit. So 140 maybe. And now if we give this a preview, you can see that we have this website, but as we scroll, nothing really happens. We just have this component on the top of the website. So if we take a look at the finished effect, as you can see, this carousel is rotating as we scroll down the website. 
So basically what we do here is we are changing the variance as we scroll down the website. So what we're going to use for this is called scroll variant. If I select this carousel here, I can actually go ahead and press effect and then select the scroll variant option here. And as you can see, we can either have layer in view as a trigger or section in view as a trigger. We are going to use section in view as a trigger for this case. And so basically here we can select a section and select the variant where we want to go when we reach that section. So what we need to do is to create these trigger sections. So I'm going to just draw frames here. I'm going to set their height to 700 and the width to fill and I'm going to make sure that the desktop breakpoint is set to a fit content height so it adapts to the content inside. So this frame that I just drew will be called 2 because this will be the second section on the website and this will basically trigger the second card right here. Let's keep the fill color because I want to show you guys something. So I think it's easier for you to see what is actually happening if we leave these fill colors. So I'm just going to duplicate this a bunch of times, actually just three times because that's all we need. And I'm just going to give them different colors. And now if we preview this website, as you can see, as we scroll down the website, the section on the top is actually staying on the top of the viewport because we have sticky positioning set, but all the other frames are scrolling because they don't have stick positioning. So we can basically use these as triggers. So all we need to do is to rename these. It's not necessary, but I like to. And then let's go to the right panel. So I'm just gonna select the second frame here and I'm going to add a scroll section called 2 and I'm going to do the same for all the rest. So this will be called 3 and this will be called 4. And now if we go back to the component here and to the scroll variant properties, you can set the viewport to the middle. So basically the variant switch will happen when we reach the middle of the section. So the trigger section will be the second section and we will go to the second variant when we reach the second section. And then we just hit add section when we reach the third section we need the third variant and when we reach the fourth section we need the four variant. So now if we take a look at this you can see that as the second section reaches the middle of the viewport the variant changes and this happens each time these triggers come in view. So now all we need to do is to remove these fields. I just left these in so you can actually see what we do. But now if we remove this, as we scroll, we don't actually see those trigger frames. And that's the cool thing about this. We just see that, wow, this has a cool effect as we scroll. And yeah, basically that's it. It's pretty simple. And yeah, you didn't have to write a single line of code. And you actually was able to do this in a similar environment like Figma. So like, <laughs> that's pretty amazing, guys. You can spice this up again with, uh, you know, more cards, as you can see on the finished animation here. And I also did this top bar that's also changing the colors. So that's basically the same scroll variant effect. You can also add click interactions. So as I click these cards, they go to that specific section. So yeah, feel free to play around with different ideas. I'm going to make sure to leave a link for this project in the description. So you're going to be able to remix it. So yeah, basically that's how you can create an arc carousel in Framer without writing a single line of code. Make sure to check out the description to find the link for the Remix link, Framer University and other useful resources that will help you learn everything about Framer. So yeah, that's it for today's tutorial. Make sure to like it and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.